Our liturgy continues on page two. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. A reading from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Please stand as you are able and join me in reading. Oh, that's next. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the Lord of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemy screams before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How wonderful he is in doing toward all people. He learned the seed to the dry land, so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless your God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. 
You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let the Egyptians ride over our heads. You went through fire and water. But you brought us out into the place of the Rorunshin. Please remain standing as we sing verse 1 of our sequence hymn and then verse 2 after the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I know that everyone here has experienced perhaps several times in your life when you've been separated from those you really love. How does it feel to you when you're apart from those that you cherish? Do you have that feeling in your heart? like it really is breaking. You have that feeling in the, in the pit of your stomach, like it's always uneasy. When we long for people, it even reacts in our bodies. During uh, several absences for deployments, I noticed something really strange about me. And this is very unusual, this symptom. It probably doesn't come up for many other people. But I long to get a haircut. For me, that's usually not first on my list of things to do anytime. But during a deployment, I really wanted to get my hair cut. And after a while, I realized I just want my head to be touched because there's no other way to, for my, anything to be touched during this time of being apart. And I realized it wasn't a haircut I was yearning for. I was yearning to be with Bev and to be with our kids, to hug and to be hugged. And so we are a group here today, but we are one body. But People are feeling different things. Some people, they can remember separations. For some, it's right now. 
And for some, it's a separation that perhaps they're anticipating with some dread. Because when we love someone, we want to be with them, and nothing else really will satisfy. So our gospel story today from Luke is about 10 lepers who were separated from their families, their friends, their entire communities, their life. Now, in ancient Israel, the treatment of illness was this. If someone noticed something, symptom that was wrong, and they look at the book of Leviticus and say, oh, okay, I've got something that's not good, they would go to the priest, and the priest would confirm it. They didn't do any therapeutics, if you will, to heal this thing. The, uh, the only intervention was to quarantine, to isolate, tell the person to get out of town. And then some of them, it would heal rather quickly, and they'd come back, and they'd be reinstated, so that was fine. But there were some people who were lip- lepers, and they realized that for them, this was a terminal treatment. They were being quarantined for probably the rest of their lives. And so we know that for them, or we can imagine for them, that it made sense to go find other lepers and to gather into small communities to support each other, to be with each other, because they were allowed that. They didn't have to separate from fellow lepers, if you will. But you can imagine, if this had happened to you, and you went to the priest, and you got the diagnosis, And you were told to separate yourself and to tear your clothing and to get outside of the camp, outside of the town, and to just wander around in the wilderness. You can imagine that after a while, it must have felt very helpless. You were caught up in a machine grinding you up, this this process that was very unkind. And then after a while, that, that helplessness would drift into hopelessness. Like, this is never going to end. There's nothing I can do short of divine intervention, and then after the longest time, it just felt endless. And that's when the despair really kicks in, and the person realizes that they have no hope. There's nothing left except for a divine intervention. So in our story today, Luke shares this story of these 10 lepers, and he's the only gospel writer who shares this particular story. And we know that very few things, except that they were all together, this 10, in this one town, and it just so happened that Jesus was walking through. I don't think that was coincidence. I think that probably they had people in these towns who would bring them out food and leave it at a distance, and then they'd come in and get it. And maybe sometimes there was communication, communication like this. There's this guy in Galilee, and he's doing amazing things, and he's healing people, and maybe, and maybe he can heal lepers too. And then another message comes, Jesus is coming to a town near you. You might want to be there. And so taking that risk and coming out of their, their isolation, they come closer to the town. They can see the path. They can see this group coming towards them. And all we know that they say is, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus doesn't do anything really cool like, you know, making the spittle and the mud and all those fun things that we've had in other Gospels. Instead, he just shouts from a distance, go show yourself to the priest. And that was their, their message, go show yourself to the priest. That's it. Then as they're wandering, wherever this priest is, that they the nearest one to go to, as they're on the way, they look at their skin, and it's clear, and there's hope, and there's this idea I can eventually get back to my family. I can get back to my friends, to my community. All I have to do is go to the priest. He's going to see that this is okay, that it's cleared up. Then I have to go to the temple in Jerusalem, make a couple of sacrifices. Then I get to have that certificate and I get of healing and I get to go home and I get to hug my loved ones and be hugged and be touched and to get back to my life. What a wonderful thing. But there was one, one who looked at his skin and He didn't just decide he was going to go to the priest. He had an idea that, well, this person who just shouted those words from afar caused this to happen. I'm going back to him, and I'm going to say thanks. And Luke points out, he's ever the one who points out any time there's an outsider that does something great, and he finds them all over the gospel. But he points out, he wants us to be sure that we know this. That one was a Samaritan. Sarah Dillon is one of my favorite New Testament scholars, and she brings up some pretty important points that have just gotten stuck in my mind for a little bit. 
But she said, well, why are we always looking down on these nine and praising this one Samaritan? And she said, let's cut these nine a break. They were actually obeying Jesus. Jesus was the one who said, go show yourself to the priest. And then she adds, and we don't even know if that Samaritan would have had access to a priest, let alone to go to the temple to offer sacrifices, which we know Samaritans weren't going to do there. And probably the temple in Mount Gerizim that the Samaritans had built, we, did, we don't know that it was rebuilt by that time. It had been destroyed a century and a half earlier. It, we don't know that it was actually restored until sometime after this. Maybe they were still doing sacrifices. We don't know. But the point is this. We don't need to look down on everybody here because there were some good choices, two good choices. And I want to look at three lessons from this story that I think are crucial, not just to answering her question, but to actually apply to our spiritual lives in this current day, right now. So the first one I see is that there's often in the spiritual life a choice between two good things. I mean, it's great when it's a good and a bad thing. You know, it's kind of clear which one to go for. But in our lives, it's often not about good and bad. They're not so stark. They're not so obvious. But instead, they're good choices. People go through discernment, go through this look at two good choices, what to do for vocation. Uh, some people, as they're looking at a new job, can think, well, you know, I could stay here and it's good, and I can go there and it would be good. It's a matter of asking questions. Which one of these two good choices is the best one for me? And so these nine lepers when they heard Jesus' command, and they realized we need to go and fulfill the law that is spelled out very clearly in Leviticus, and we need to go to this priest, well, they, they made their choice. And eventually, they were probably reinstated to their community, and it was, it was good. That was a good thing. They got healing that day. But this story is also a reminder, a very sobering reminder, that there are times in our life when we receive gifts and we forget who the source of those gifts is. And we, for, we forget to return to Jesus and to give thanks. That's the sober warning. And so we see in the Samaritan, not just one who was healed, but Jesus pronounces on him when he comes back, he worships Jesus, tells him to rise up, and he says to him, you're not just cleansed, you're not just healed, you are now made whole. And that's the longing we all have, is to be made whole in our relationship with God and with all of creation. It's what we long for, but we think we're longing for something else. But that's the real call for each human heart, is that place where God resides and beckons us to come in and be with him. So that's the first thing. There's a, a choice between a good and a best. And I want to go a little bit deeper into that choice so to, to say why I think that the Samaritan's choice was the be best one rather than the fulfillment of the law and the command. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, there was a point of contact between Yahweh and his people. And in the wilderness during the Exodus, that place was the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. And there God came in this great power with a cloud and then a fire and by as they wandered through the the desert they were shielded they were shaded by this cloud and the light the fire would guide them through the night eventually then when they took when they took the land and they started setting up their homes they built a temple with Solomon and that same cloud that same Shekinah glory returned to the to the temple in the most holy place that was their point of meeting. That is where God's people in that time went to have healing, forgiveness, and communion with God. That's the Old Covenant. That's what the nine lepers continued with, was the Old Covenant. The reason I think that that, 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 that Samaritan made the best choice was this. He went with the New Covenant. And the New Covenant shifts all that, that point of meeting with God in the temple, it shifts it from there to Jesus. And it is in Jesus, not in a place, but in a relationship with a person who is God. That's where we find healing, we find forgiveness, 
and we find communion with our God. So these nine lepers chose to continue in the old covenant, but the one who is the leper, who is the Samaritan, chose to enter into a new relationship that made him whole, that put him right with God and with all other things. The third thing I want to point out is just the importance of giving thanks. And this is something that it goes way beyond manners classes or our parents always saying, well, say thank you. This goes beyond to a, a point of worship, if you will. The cornerstone of our faith is Jesus Christ and what he did for us in his life and in his death and his resurrection. And there's only one, I won't say adequate because there's no adequate response, but there's only one really good response that we can have to that and that is to give thanks. So healthy Christians do not wait till the last Thursday in November to say thanks. In fact, daily we pray for healing and forgiveness and we give thanks to God. And then every week we come together like this as the body of Christ to come into this service to give thanks. What's the Greek word for to give thanks? Eucharist. We come to celebrate the Eucharist, to give thanks. So in our worship service, we have actually two services together in one. We come together, we gather for the, the, word, the celebration of the word, the hearing of the word, the prayers. But that part of the service, the, the sacrament of word, actually begins, could begin with the words that we have from those ten lepers. Master, have mercy on us. And, and that response is then... Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. And then we receive that healing, that grace with God, our forgiveness of our sins, we experience the peace of God, and then we move into what that Samaritan leper did. We move into giving thanks. That's the key to wholeness. We can have healing, but we can also have healing and wholeness, and that comes in our communion with God through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'll finish with this. I, um, my last 10 years as an Army chaplain, and I was surprised actually to find that I've been retired from the Army for 10 years now, but those last 10 years of my, um, my career, I taught other chaplains how to be marriage and family therapists. And some of them took up my challenge to go and get licensed as a marriage and family therapist, as you know, in addition to them being a chaplain. Those who took up the challenge had to face the dreaded marriage and family therapy licensure exam. There were 200 questions, four possible uh, answers to each one. When you look at them, you have to figure out which two are wrong. Then there are two that are right. You have to choose the best answer among the two right ones. It was a nightmare. It was just horrible. There were casualties all over the place. People taking it again and again. In our gospel story, there are ten lepers who face two right answers. And nine obey that command of Jesus and the dictates of their religion, the Levitical law, to go to the temple, present themselves to the priest and receive that certificate and go home clean. But there was only one and he was a foreigner who chose the best answer. He recognized the source of healing and he went back to the source and he said thanks in an act of worship, not just a, a phrase, but an act of worship, gave thanks. And in that act of faith, he received not just healing, but wholeness. So on that day, 10 people were healed and on that day, one person entered into eternal life through faith in Jesus. I believe each day of our lives we're faced with multiple decisions. Many of them, they're between two good answers. And blessed are we when we recognize that the gifts that we receive come from God and we give thanks to Jesus. And blessed are we when we are Eucharistic people. Amen. 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 Please stand and join me in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are on page six of your bulletin. Lord of the universe and leader of your people, give wisdom to all those who exercise authority. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops Andy, Kay, Jeff, Hector, and Scott, our rector Keith, our deacon Becky, our assisting priest Dave, and our campus missioner Rachel, and all those who serve this congregation and throughout the world. May the light of the risen Christ shine upon them through their ministry. Guide the leaders of our country in private and in public life that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. We pray that they may work for peace, goodwill, and the well-being on all of as the crowd who gathered to hear Jesus preach shared two fish and five loaves, they discovered that when their gifts were blessed, they increased and became a blessing to others. We give you thanks for the uncountable miracles and blessings in our lives. When we give out of our abundance, there is always more than enough. Teach us to put the good of the many before the greed of the few. Help us to love truth and to recognize falsehoods and corruption. Help us to remember that the greatest among us are servants. Lead us as we comfort the afflicted, help the poor and care for the needy. Help us to soothe the anxious and calm the fearful. Give us grace to admit our mistakes and arrogance, forgiveness for our foolishness, and wisdom to live as series of creation. Jesus, help us to protect our world so that we can use our natural resources to benefit others. Deliver us from the cowardice that dares not face truth, the laziness that is content half truth and the arrogance that thinks it knows all truth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have left done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, please be seated. We do, um, of course, welcome everybody. And if you don't have a full tummy, that's your own problem because we had a wonderful <laughs> breakfast here earlier, and I'm sure there might be leftovers. Um, just a few announcements, but they're pretty big. Um, the first one is, if you are new to us, please fill out the Welcome and Connect card. And I know that there are some pumpkins across the street. On Sundays, we'll have that open till 2 o'clock, so please come get your pumpkins. That goes to the benefit of the community garden plus some of our outreach that's going on here at Christ Church. We have a newcomer's dinner for those who are newish. That means me too, sort of. Um, October 20th at 6 is the first one, and the details and sign-up sheets will be sent out via email. Uh, we just started today, Episcopal 101. Sally's leading that, and it will be on Sundays that's starting today and November 6th because we have Bishop Ryan coming here on the 13th to do baptism and confirmation and reception and reaffirmation. The other thing that we want to um, make note of is our even song, which is this evening. It will be a beautiful service with lots of um, very deep music, and it will be a great experience, and there are places in there where we can sing together as well. I think that's everything. If you're not for done with it, I know she's waiting. Everything except for the important stuff. Okay, Daughters of the King after the service. And then, Bertie, would you come and give us our stewardship talk? Good morning, everyone. Well, as you know, my name is Bertie Jones, and I've been a member of Christ Church for about four years. As you all know, this is a special time of year where we focus on stewardship. We have heard from several members of Christ Church over the last few weeks, and we have had special events to remind us about stewardship, including the waffle treat that we had today, served up by members of our stewardship committee. And we have other speakers and events to come. When I was asked to participate on the stewardship committee and to share one of our Sunday stewardship moments, I said, count me in. That's a true statement. I was surprised myself. <laughs> because, but really, I wanted to say thank you to those who have given in the past before I ever set foot in this church. Being a member of Christ Episcopal Church has been a transformational experience for me and my family. I give in time, service, and financially, First, because I can't thank this community enough for the many blessings I have received. Those blessings have been made possible by people who have gone before me and those who sit beside me. The formation opportunities, small group studies, ministries like our beautiful choir, uh, the discernment committee that I was a part of, and the vestry are all made possible when we respond to the invitation to give of ourselves. God uses our gifts to transform the lives of many people you may never see face to face. How can you help? I want to invite you to consider volunteering to serve on one or two or ten maybe, <laughs> ministries, <laughs> uh, or maybe just a new area of ministry. Or how about maybe a three-month try before you buy? If you are interested in the vestry, please talk to any one of our vestry members. Their names are listed in the church bulletin. And finally, please consider making a financial pledge for the new year. I used to think that you had to wait until the end of the stewardship season to turn those in, 
but actually there is a pledge card in the back of your take home bulletin and you can fill those out and turn those in at any time. Thank you very much and have a wonderful week. Okay, and um, just a couple of things. First of all, yes, Father Keith is not here because he has the new grandbaby, Ellery, and uh, because we have such good people in our church, we keep going, but we'll, he'll be back next week. Sharon is here as the, um, she is the one who is in charge of our stewardship committee, but she has a lot of things she's decided to do over the last few months. And Sharon's is here to talk about something else very special. Yeah, I'm going to take off my stewardship hat for a second and talk about St. Nicholas Market. About a year ago, Amy and I uh, had our St. Nicholas Market three hours on a Sunday where we, that do crafts, sold our crafts and had a good time. And this year we decided to expand it to a two-day event, November the 4th and 5th. We've asked vendors, and we have a good lineup of vendors. Uh, in fact, Michelle, where's she's, Michelle? She went she, okay. She's done her uh, embroidery and her quilting. Georgie's husband is going to have wooden pins. Uh, a young lady that I've mentored and has just started her own bakery is going to have her Mystical Sweets Bakery. And there's going to be a gentleman there who makes Christmas ornaments and hand burns them onto wood. He has designed our church, the entrance, the bell tower entrance, on an ornament just for the St. Nicholas Market. And it's gorgeous. I'm going to have it in the Northex after the service. If you would like to pre-order one, and I hope you will, because he needs to know how many to make, uh, these are only $20, and they're just gorgeous. So I'll be in the Northex um, after the service to take your name, hopefully. I don't want money now. Just pre-order. Uh, in addition to vendors, I have it on good authority that Santa is going to be there. Yeah. He's going to be at our St. Nicholas Market from 10 to 2, and then 4 to 7, and then 10 to 2 on Saturday. So that's, that's going to be a fun thing, too. Moms and dads, bring your cell phones so you can take pictures uh, with Santa. I'm going to ask the congregation two favors. Please tell your friends and neighbors and co-workers about our St. Nicholas Market. Uh, a lot of our vendors are putting in a lot of time, effort, and love into their crafts and things they're going to sell. So we'd like to have a good showing for them. The second thing is, uh, and this is thanks to Carrie Hancock, she suggested we have an estate sale, a church-wide estate sale. So on the east end of the parish hall, the far end of the parish hall, bring your donated items that you've been thinking about taking to Goodwill but just haven't made it or donated. Things in your closet you just don't use anymore. Lamps, dishes, small furniture, anything that would be an estate sale. And we're going to call it an upscale estate sale church-wide. Write down what you're going to donate, and we're going to ask Sally to give everybody a letter so you can use it for tax exemption purposes. Start bringing your items on November 1st for them to decide who to donate to as far as charities and ministries. Any questions? You've got to have an ornament. They're wonderful. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We have another page. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. stand or kneel as is your custom. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when He had given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. In him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray together. The post-communion prayer is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace today and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing together our recessional hymn.